the panel comes out the bottom and the glass comes Actually, out the yeah, top? Yeah, the plastics and metals come at the bottom there and then the glass comes at the top here. That is insanely cool. I know, having been, having worked in solar manufacturing for so long, it's, yeah, we still just love watching this thing because it's just... That is like a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, that is like a magic trick. Okay, let me back up for a second. This is gonna take a little bit of explanation, but probably to the surprise of no one, I'm fascinated by solar panel technology. Being able to generate electricity for yourself on site, on your roof, is an insanely compelling technology. However, it has its downsides. There's a growing tsunami of solar panels hitting their end of life coming in the next decade. And one of the most common things I see in my solar panel video comments is that solar panels can't be recycled. That's why I flew myself down to Odessa, Texas to visit SolarCycle to see if that's really the case. what I find out? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Surfshark, but more on that later. Now, I flew myself down to Texas to visit SolarCycle on my own dime to see firsthand what recycling solar panels looks like. To me, the ironic part of where they're located is that it's kind of oil country down in Texas. There were oil rigs everywhere, and in the center of all that is a cutting edge renewable energy company. What's really funny is that there's even an old oil rig on their property. There's our, our oil rig. <laughs> Gotta have an oil rig. You, you don't have a solar recycling facility if you don't have an oil rig. I was taken on a tour of their facility by Suvi Sharma, SolarCycle CEO and founder, and Rob Vinji, their chief operating officer. But to pause for just one second, why is it so difficult to recycle a solar panel? Why haven't we been doing it all along? Well, we've mastered how to make long lasting solar panels cheaply and efficiently. It's that exact process that makes recycling them really difficult. A solar panel is made up of layers of tempered glass and vinyl acetate film or EVA that's sandwiching the solar cells to protect them. Then that's surrounded with an aluminum frame. It doesn't sound complicated, but because of how these layers are essentially glued together, it's really hard to undo that. That's exactly what SolarCycle is focused on solving. Now their process starts off by loading up a machine with panels to be broken down one by one. This first machine breaks off the aluminum frame in one swift motion. The aluminum frame pieces are collected and prepared for recycling while you're left with a naked glass panel. Now the next step of the process is the tricky step of delaminating the solar cells from the glass and doing it in a way that doesn't mix up the materials. This is one of the hardest parts of recycling solar panels. You know, this is uh, glass basically, but it was glued before to plastics and metals. So we spent a lot of time and effort on developing equipment to get this glass out in a pure form because when you get out in a pure form like this, you can reuse it and make new glass with it. Right. If you don't do that, you can't make new glass with it. It'll, it'll kill your furnace or things like that because of the metal impurities that are in there. So, so yeah, getting them out uh, in a pure form is the hardest part. The workers prep the glass before sending it into the next machine, which is essentially heating the panel up to soften the materials and delaminate the glass from the solar cells. So the panel comes out the bottom and the glass comes Actually, out the yeah, top? Yeah, the plastics and metals come to the bottom there and then the glass comes at the top here. That is insanely cool. I know, having been, having worked in solar manufacturing for so long, it's, yeah, we still just love watching this thing because it's just... This, that is this would be good. like a magic trick. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a magic trick. What you're left with is the glass that can be processed for recycling and the solar cell itself, which is then sent off into the next set of machines. And because many of the machines and extraction processes they've developed are unique, I can't show the exact details. However, the basics of what happens to the solar cells is that they're ground up into a fine powder of metals and silicon. But before we get into that, there's something else that you shouldn't let grind you up and that's online tracking and targeting. Today's sponsor Surfshark can help you with that. I always recommend using a VPN when using public Wi-Fi, but VPNs can be very useful even when you're at home. A lot of online services use some pretty sophisticated commercial tracking and machine learning to apply very targeted advertising. A VPN can protect you from some of that. Surfshark's Clean Web does a great job blocking ads, trackers, and malicious websites, making it safer to use the internet even at home. And you can even make it look like your IP address is coming from a completely different country. This can come in handy if you want to stream a video that's only available from a specific location. I've used this feature on a few recent trips. And one of the best parts of Surfshark is that it's easy to set up on all your devices, whether that's iPhone or Android, Mac or PC. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use with an unlimited number of devices. And for a limited holiday deal, use my code UNDECIDED to get up to six additional months for free. Don't miss out on that. 
Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try out for yourself. Link in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and all of you for supporting the channel. So back to what SolarCycle gets out of grinding up the panels. Here, after you get that glass, and the frame, the J-Box off, just the back sheet and actually the cell material here. Lots of valuable material here and the plastics on the back side. <laughs> so this goes through the additional processing on the back end of the line. And what comes out of here, bags of it over here, we take that and it goes into individual people, individual supply chains that really value this. And so it can all be reused Here's a great example of solar metal, copper, aluminum, tin, and silicon. Silver, of course. Silver is the, uh, the big one in here. So this goes right back into use, into the supply chain. That is so cool. None of these materials are difficult to recycle on their own, but normally de-sandwiching a solar panel to get at the goods is time-consuming and labor-intensive, which drives up the cost. A 2021 National Renewable Energy Lab study puts the cost of trashing a solar panel at under $5, but recycling one will run you between $15 and $45. So in most cases, it's just not economically feasible to recycle solar panels, and that's a big problem. There's a lot of solar panels out there, and that number is set to grow. And just to be clear, this isn't the problem part. This is actually a good thing. But about 8 million metric tons of decommissioned solar panels could accumulate globally by 2030. By 2050, that number could reach 80 million. Now, chucking that much junk into the garbage isn't very green. And calling decommissioned solar panels junk is a bit of a misnomer. As you saw just a moment ago, they're filled with lots of valuable materials like copper, silver, and more. MIT estimates that just the materials and solar panels coming offline each year could be worth an estimated $2 billion by 2050. But to get at those materials and reduce the amount of solar panels going into landfills, we have to find a better, cheaper way of deconstructing the solar sandwich. That's why SolarCycle has been investing a lot of time, money, and effort into developing new machines and technologies to break solar panels back down into their component parts. But at a high level, taking the materials apart and keeping them pure, that's the hardest job that we have really at the end. And doing it in high volume, you know, that's the hardest job that we have. We've developed machines to remove the aluminum frames. We want to remove them so there's not a lot of plastic residue and things like that in there. So optimizing the equipment and the processes. What we've done is we developed all custom equipment to do what we do because it just didn't exist. So this tool is an interesting example of where we we took people that had developed uh, machines to put aluminum frames on solar panels. We said, okay, now let's figure out how to take them apart, reverse yeah. engineer that. And yeah. so that's what we did here in this right. tool. It's very, it's very neat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's fast. Speaking of aluminum, though it's not as prized as silver or copper, recycling it still represents a massive energy savings. Recycling aluminum uses 95% less energy than making virgin aluminum. New aluminum bears the cost of mining the raw material, bauxite, and then transporting and refining it. SolarCycle estimates that every solar panel recycled using their method saves about 97 pounds of CO2 emissions. That figure rises to more than 1.5 tons of CO2 if a panel goes on to be reused. It's a great circular economy showcase. We are uh, finding that there is an interest in building these circular economy type companies. At SolarCycle, we are focused not just on recycling, but also manufacturing new materials from some of those recycled materials and becoming a recycled material supplier into the industry. So these are new business models, effectively. And we're participating in a very large secular growth curve, which is solar, uh, which a lot of investors are seeing and investing more in. And of course, the less we can mine, the better, for a lot of reasons. Mining is very rarely environmentally friendly, especially when we're talking about the rare earth and valuable metals that end up in a lot of consumer electronics. Plus, 90% of solar panels are currently manufactured in China, which represents a potential supply chain bottleneck. Again, we want more solar panels and more affordable solar panels, so finding any way to reduce the reliance on those mines is a big win. And according to Arizona State University's Meng Tao, we're also going to face a silver shortage before we build all the solar panels that we need. So recovering those precious metals is critical. Today, to our knowledge, we're the first company to extract and get the silver and the copper out of inside the laminate or what's already glued inside. And solar panels use about 15% of the world's silver supply right. and growing. 
If you look at the forecast, then by 2040, the solar industry would use more than 100% of the annual world silver supply. So it's very important to get that silver because it's not easy to go mine more of that from the ground. So yes, we do get the silver, the silicon and the copper outside of, uh, out of the panel and then back into supply chains that can make new silver products and materials out of it. So yeah, recycling upwards of 90% of the panel or straight refurbishing one like SolarCycle does, that's a really big win. That's value. And SolarCycle isn't alone. Arizona State University has received a $485,000 grant from the Department of Energy Advanced Manufacturing Office. The goal is to develop a new recycling process to recover high value materials like silver and silicon. And the process involves using a hot blade to separate the silicon cells from the sheets of polymers and glass surrounding them. Then they'll use a chemical cocktail to wash out and collect 100% of the precious metals. Though the cocktail isn't environmentally friendly, it can be regenerated and used again and again. And the field gets even bigger when you look overseas. This past summer, Australia's Macquarie University has come up with yet another innovative way to recycle solar panels, just microwave them. Now that's an oversimplification, though their research really did begin with just a simple microwave, like the one that's probably in your kitchen right now. But cooking up parts of the solar panel with a microwave loosens them up and should make it easier to disassemble panels and recycle their parts individually. Researchers from France's CEA Linton are using a diamond wire to cut through the photovoltaic cells, separating the module's glass front face from the polymer-based back sheet, and thus making it very easy to disassemble and recycle properly. Now, my point is, solar panel recycling is an important and growing field, and it's about to pop off. There's just so many cool techniques being tried out. Innovation is running wild, and companies like SolarCycle are getting traction and making headway. Their recycling plant in Texas is already on track to recycle between half a million and one million solar panels by the end of the year. Now that said, at the time of making this video, SolarCycle can salvage a panel for about $15 to $18, which is on the very low end of the recycling price range that I mentioned earlier. But I saw some machines that they're working on that should drive the cost down even further. There's really good reason to believe that as innovation spreads and economies of scale begin to kick in, the price of recycling a solar panel will continue to drop. Here's Suvi again. You know, uh, if you look back um, 30 years ago, solar panels, they used to produce about 50 watts and they'd cost, you know, easily north of $10 a watt to manufacture, right? Mm -hmm. Today, you can make them 600 watts and they cost 30 cents a watt. So how did that happen? That happened through technology innovation, bringing, bringing the cost down, developing equipment, developing the materials and, and continuous R&D and innovation. That's what we have to do on the recycling side now. So. Absolutely, it can be recycled, but we just have to develop the tools and technologies to do it. And that's what you know we're working on at SolarCycle. I want to thank Suvi, Rob, and the rest of the SolarCycle team for inviting me in to check out what they're doing. I'm going to be keeping close tabs on how the industry progresses. But what do you think? Do you think companies like SolarCycle will become the norm in the future? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every single video. Your support really does help us keep delivering you these videos every single week. If you'd like to support the channel and get on the early videos, check out the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.